Welcome to the Ecom Breakthrough Podcast. Are you ready to unlock the full potential and growth in your business? You've already crossed seven figures in sales, but the challenge is knowing how to take your business to the next level. Join Josh Hadley, an eight-figure e-com business owner and investor, as he interviews highly successful business owners. Get ready, because you're going to learn specific actions you can take today to help your business reach its full potential and leave a lasting impact on the world. Welcome to the Ecom Breakthrough Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Hadley, where I interview the top business leaders in e-commerce. Past guests include Adam Heist, Kevin King, and Michael E. Gerber, the author of The E-Myth. Today, I'm speaking with Dima Kubrick, an Amazon seller selling more than $20 million in annual revenue. He's also the founder of Sellerize and ASAP Warehouse. And we are going to be talking a lot about how to scale from seven figures to eight figures and beyond and all of the strategies that Dima has implemented in his own brands to help them scale faster. This episode is brought to you by Ecom Breakthrough Consulting, where I help seven-figure companies grow to eight figures and beyond. Listen, Dima, I started my business back in 2015, and I grew it to an eight-figure brand in seven years. But I made a lot of mistakes along the way that made the path of getting to eight figures take a lot longer than it needed to. There were times where I made a lot of mistakes as it relates to hiring team members or the wrong team members or not knowing how to actually lead and provide leadership to people that I bring on and creating SOPs to my team, let alone to say the cash flow issues that we experienced along the way. I wish I would have had a guide along the way that would have helped me overcome those obstacles quicker and help me get to that eight figure path a lot faster than I did. So to our fellow listeners, those of you who are hitting similar roadblocks or obstacles and want to know the next steps to take your brand to the next level, then go to ecombreakthrough.com. That's ecom with two M's to learn more. And as a special bonus to my podcast listeners, this month I'm giving away one $10,000 comprehensive business strategy audit session at no cost. All you need to do is email me at josh at ecombreakthrough.com and in your subject line, say strategy audit, and then plead your case as to why I should choose you and your brand to work with for this month. But today I am super excited to introduce you all to Dima. Dima is an eight figure Amazon seller selling over 20 million per year across all of his different brands. He is also the founder of Sellerize and ASAP Warehouse. He's been running his own businesses since he was 19 years old, and he knows what it takes to be successful on Amazon. So with that introduction, welcome to the show, Dima. Thank you, Josh. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. Thank you so much for speak out to share some of my ideas and how we've been implementing strategies on e-commerce and our Amazon businesses in the last 10 years. As uh, when you was presenting yourself, I also was feeling that in these 10 years, I got uh, lots of up and downs. Some of them been harder, some of them been easier. But overall, I can tell you, if you guys never experience a bankruptcy level, <laughs> you don't know what entrepreneurship means. By the way, I was just listening to this podcast by Profit First and uh, by the guy Mike, Mike Makowitz. I don't remember his, uh, I, I cannot pronounce his last name exactly. Uh, fantastic guy. And he said SBA, uh, which is Small Business Administration, conducted some, um, some research. And they said like uh, small businesses in America, which is a uh, business they're doing under 25 million a year. Uh, majority of the owners, they run check to check. So fixing your financial and cash flow things is one of the um, fundamentals that you have to focus at the beginning. And I'm sure, like I would say in the first three years, Growing Amazon or any business, it's not only about Amazon, uh, you may experience a serious um, uh, cash flow tightness, but just relax. Oh, everything is going to be okay. Go to the podcast events, maybe find some cool mentor who can help you to do e-com breakthrough. Um, and that will help you to, to actually survive and, and uh, become wealthy and maybe make some uh, generational wealth. Dima, I think, you know, you, you hit the nail right on the head um, to get started here. You know, cash flow is one of the biggest obstacles for any e-commerce business. And Mike Michalowicz, he wrote the book Profit First. Excellent uh, book, by the way. But we actually had the person who partnered with Mike Michalowicz. Her name was Cindy Thompson. She wrote the book Profit First for e-commerce sellers. 
She's a, you know, wow. certified profit first, uh, you know, I guess mentor or coach and runs her own oh. accounting agency. She was on the podcast just a few episodes ago. So please make sure you this. go back and watch that because yes, like everything you just talked about, Dima, like Cindy knows the challenges that come with inventory and how you should be tracking it and how to implement profit first for e-commerce sellers because Mike in his book, Profit First, doesn't talk about inventory. Um, and so it's a whole other animal that you have to tackle within e-commerce. So. I, um, Josh, I completely agree. And I can tell you, majority of the people, they think the moment they're going to make just bigger revenue or bigger profits, they, they're going to figure out the way because right now it's just complex and they're just in a lunch stage or business just too, too little. Uh, believe me or not, if you don't fix the fundamental issues at the beginning, they're just going to be way bigger and will be way more complex to fix them along the way or later. That's why all these books about building a team, they start, they say, in start, start small, hire the first VA as fast as possible, just to, to get sense of how to manage the business, how to uh, delegate processes, how to trust your team in terms of results and KPIs. Uh, because when you have already like solid operations, uh, rewrite and uh, redo the things could be way more complex and you can lose a lot of money because of that. Yeah, it's so true. Now, Dima, before we dive into everything today, I want to tee this up to say, you know, you are voted as the best speaker at the most recent Billion Dollar Seller Summit that was back in Puerto Rico in the summer of 2023. And so, you know your stuff. Um, I think people have already heard your name in many different areas, but I want to tee that up because, you know, this is going to be an action packed episode. You're going to have to hit the rewind button a few times. Dima and I offline already talked about a numerous items that we're going to dive in today. And so, Dima, with that being said, I want to start by, with this question. Our listeners are seven figure sellers. They want to scale to eight figures and beyond. You've been there and done that. So, what is probably the number one strategy that sellers need to implement in their business if they want to continue to scale their brand? One of the biggest parts for you to understand uh, that. Uh, going, let's say, from 100,000 sales per month to 500,000 sales per month or 1 million sales per month, it's completely different businesses. It's not just a double or triple your sales. It's uh, completely different in terms of structure, maybe loans, uh, uh, companies, uh, the, the teams, uh, the processes, the data analytics, uh, the resources that you acquire and, and amount of money you risk in as well. Um, as far as, as I can explain, Everything starts from a uh, team and uh, cash flow and finances. You have, to, you have to understand all your numbers. If you don't understand your numbers, it could be a very challenging for you to, go, um, to grow, especially if uh, at the beginning, let's say, when you sell uh, 30, 40, $50,000 per month, you can make mistakes of not doing proper accounting. But the moment you're going um, above or like higher and higher and higher, you, you need to understand how much, uh, how much your team cost, how much services cost, how much PPC agents and uh, your marketing, how much it costs. Of course, a lot of, a lot of sellers, they understand how much they're spending uh, monthly on, um, on PPC, but that's not the, the only main, main expense. There's a lot of things uh, that comes together. And uh, we was just briefly uh, talking with the Josh previously. Uh, you need to understand how much it costs you in time, money, focus to grow to eight-figure or maybe even a nine-figure seller eventually. Um, and um, we usually ask this question, how much it costs to become a bestseller? Because to become a bestseller, you will need to invest a lot. How much inventory you need to have in hands? Like, for example, if you sell 1,000 units a month and a bestseller sell 10,000 um, a month, you need to understand that you, before you double or 10x your sales, you need to buy this inventory. Where are you going to get this money? And I have an amazing example. Uh, I, I sell one of the products called um, Collagen Powder. So the, the product, let's say, was making about uh, $40,000 per month. And for, for me uh, uh, to, to have enough inventory uh, to just keep up with the sales, I need to have about like $500,000, $600,000 uh, in inventory. So just, just to collect this amount of inventory, you need about 15 to 18 months if everything goes fine, no algorithm changes, no PPC uh, changes, no ranking drops. Uh, just to collect enough money. That's why uh, sometimes you can see someone doing a lot of money, but the actual profits and the actual money you can withdraw from the company 
is uh, another a lot of, like challenging process. That's why the Profit First is one of the books I admire you to read. The process to read. Uh, maybe this uh, uh, Profit First for e-commerce people. I didn't see this information or articles yet or video, but I'm definitely gonna dive in. I love it. So fo- focusing on the fundamentals, which is just understanding your finances. And I think Dima, we see that often with a lot of um, sellers, right? That that they some of them, as I've talked to, you know, Northbound Group and others that help you exit your your business, right? They say about a third of entrepreneurs that come wanting to exit their business, they come with financials that are not well put together. In fact, the entrepreneur doesn't even understand the financials very well. And then they're basically told like, uh, you're not in a place to be exiting your business at this time, right? And so if that's a third of sellers, like everybody needs to do an internal check and say like, am I, you know, am I one of those, uh, one of three sellers that I'm not accurately overseeing my books? And, you know, we also had um, Nathan Hirsch on the podcast as well. He talked about one of the most important things that you need to be implementing in your business is a monthly financial review, right? And understanding where is money coming in, where is money coming out, and not only understanding your accrual accounting books, but also understanding your cash basis accounting books because they're two, they tell two very different stories. And so if those words that I'm using, accrual accounting, cash basis accounting, if those are foreign words to you, I would pause the rest of this podcast. I would go to YouTube and go watch a five minute YouTube uh, video that tells you the difference of those things. And I would genuinely invest the time to understand your financials because that is honestly like the fundamental basis in order to scale to eight figures. So Dima, I love that. Josh, you I, also talked I about, add, I would add one, add one, one important part. There's so many, there's so many things that you need to do right in your business. A lot of them, but not all of them will have a direct impact on your growth, profitability, st- uh, wh- whatever you name it. Um, there's a cool book, it's called Execution. And at the beginning of the book, the guy says, uh, majority of, of the owners, they don't understand what exactly um, making profits in their companies. You need to understand like, okay, running a good accounting is important. But to be honest, if your product going in ranking, uh, dropping in ranking uh, like, like a rock from the cliff, of course, understanding accounting and paying service providers for that would be fantastic. But overall, man, you have to, <laughs> you have to, Redo your daily schedule and a daily focus and making sure that the most important things taken care, care of first. And then maybe, of course, you, you will de- decide where you're going to allocate uh, your money for additional services. And that's, that's what we're going to talk about this today, about a proper focuses on a daily basis for, for you and maybe for your team members. That's why, because you, uh, you need to progress. You need to progress year over year. And uh, one of the things I, I, I figure out for myself, maybe it's not going to be for everybody, but I, my, my catalog, all my products, they, they focus mainly on consumables. I like consumable products. Uh, and the, if you're thinking about consumables, it's like a supplements and the beauty products. There's a lot of consumables. Some people, they buy, um, they buy bags, they buy packaging materials, they buy um, uh, coffee, they buy um, there are a lot of groceries. Uh, there, there's so many consumables even in, in the categories that are not really, um, not very popular. Like uh, think about like Home Depot. Go to Home Depot, like if you live in the United States, just go to the regular big store that niche specific and, uh, and walk on this, uh, like my pet products. Go to the pet store and you're gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna blow your mind because when you're doing a product research in a, in a tools like a Jungle Scout, Helium 10, whatever tool you're using for the product research, sometimes uh, you, you're using these filters and everybody sees exactly the same results over and over again. That's why the competition is so tough in uh, specific niches. But if you go to the regular store, you will find out how much like uh, fish food or turtle food is available on the market. Horse um, Himalayan salt brick. I, I'm not saying these products uh, to be launched, but I've just seen this all the time. I don't have a horse, <laughs> but <laughs> but I'm just saying like there's a lot of cool products that you can launch. And if your product is a, is a good quality, I'm not saying superior quality. A lot of people, they try to improve, they try to make product uh, better, but 
sometimes uh, you you need to make product worse. What, what I'm what I'm saying, I, I usually have some examples here, but um, I have uh, uh, I, I don't have it with me. I, I wouldn't be able to. You know what? Uh, give me just a second. I'm gonna bring something to give you an amazing example. It says right here in my uh, other room in my office, and I'm gonna show you something. Give me a second. All right, let's do it. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you example so you don't understand. You don't, you don't misunderstand what I'm saying when you uh, make it product worse. Uh, well, like, for example, this, this is the DJI um, Osma. It's like has a nice stand. It's like if you put here, it's like follow you, follow your face. It's it's fantastic product. It's like maybe it's like $200 product. I, I don't remember, but uh, it used to be $200. Maybe it's the price been dropped on something. It's like a special uh, connections and uh, battery inside. And then uh, there's another product. It also has a, uh, also has a stand. But it's just a magnetic clip and that's it. And this product is like $60. But there's even, um, you just, what, what I'm trying to say, you need to understand what exactly people are going to buy on what exactly they need in a, uh, in a product. Or what, what's, the, what's their... What's uh, their pain point that they're trying to what, solve, what, For right? example, this is, this is yeah, what's the, what's the coffee mug, okay? So people, when they're thinking about Amazon, they're thinking about like, People can, uh, um, when people think about Amazon, they think it's like endless opportunities or endless keywords amounts. But every product has a limited amount of keywords that people are going to buy with. So if you want to find a coffee mug or uh, a camera stand, there is a limited amount of keywords that will be related to this product. And some products will be a high, highly related. So some some products, uh, keywords will be less related. But you need to understand that some, uh, uh, some keywords, like for example, these two types of products, they will be fine with a completely different search terms. Some things will be crossed, but some things would be different. And, and finding this keyword that's uh, highly related to your product and ranking these keywords is the one of the uh, most important job for you as an Amazon seller to be focused on. Another question would be, how much is going to cost you to rank these keywords? Let's say this, let's say Coffee Mug maybe has like 17 keywords that were going to make you money. Rest of the keywords probably will not make any cell, they, they, they have a search, uh, uh, search volume, people call the search volume, but we don't, we don't estimate our uh, launches and our product ranking based on search volume. We only look at the amount of sales that keyword can bring when we rank to the one, two, or third position. And that's one of the biggest uh, focus you have to have. You have to have, okay, if this product can be sold only through 17 highly relevant keywords, how many sales this Keywords can bring in position number one. This is the simplest explanation, but people missing this point. They go through these difficult uh, Excel files and combine combinations. But the only what you need to understand is like, okay, uh, keyword number one can bring me 20 cells per day. Keyword number two uh, can bring me 15 cells per day. When you combine them, you see, okay, the product can bring me 150 cells per day. What are my chances to rank to the position number one? So this is the se- second biggest part. Uh, you're not, you're not competing with the entire Amazon. You're competing with top three guys. So those top three guys, they have, a, they have a images, they have uh, uh, reviews, they have price. So you need to understand, okay, if you're going to place yourself next to the guy, like top one guy, like you will number two, for example, uh, how many people will click on, you, on your image? Like how many chances people will choose you against him? And I can tell you, from my personal experience, the review count is not as important as people think. Uh, review velocity is more important than, than, uh, than review count. Uh, price, important. Uh, coupon is important. Uh, but image is the most important part of your journey because it's, it's really responsible for click-through rate. And when we work on an image, we, we spend a lot of money before we launch in the product. We do a lot of tests. We use services like uh, PicFu, uh, Intellivi, um, Cellametric. This, these services we use for, for initial comparison and A-B testing. So for example, we, if we want to compete in a coffee mug space, we take our coffee mug and we take our top three competitors, we put them on an on a A-B test and we, wanna, and we want to make sure our product is winning four, six clicks out of 10 against uh, our uh, competitor products. And of course, it's... Uh, it's a website that uh, you can choose uh, that Amazon customers have to be in a poll. But uh, still, even if our product winning, the actual results you're only going to see through the Amazon A-B testing. So we also run a lot of A-B testing through Amazon. And that's an, uh, 
uh, very important part. Also on the images, uh, we find out that if you place your box correctly, uh, you're going to have a better click-through rate and conversion rate versus products that, that, that don't have a box on it. So you're talking uh, about like and, product uh, packaging on the main image? You think product the product packaging? packaging? Yeah. It doesn't have to be the actual product packaging. Your product packaging can be shitty packaging. Visually, you can make the package that will attract the person. So, and eventually, if you see that people like your packaging more, uh, then you can probably redo your packaging. So, before you, you uh, make any reduce or uh, like any mass production packaging uh, improvements, try to test it first. Like, try to add like this sign or try to make your um, uh, um, product name bigger or maybe smaller. Maybe you put like some additional, um, uh, we're calling this like a, a, like an eye catching spot. We try to find them. Uh, and uh, like, for example, one of the products we was fighting with war, one of our competitors, we, we, we've been bestseller for like eight years and um, our product was red. So everybody was black before. So we did, we did a red, red design. Uh, it was stands out. Like everybody was clicking, buying. That was why we was being a bestseller. And then everybody started to copy us and now everybody become red. <laughs> and we're like, oh my God. Uh, so there's almost no differentiation. So we make product blue. Now everybody is red and we blue and we bestseller. And we also add like additional, like an eye catching uh, spot later. Maybe we can, I can show you how it looks like, but you can just, you can just strategize what, what's, uh, what can be placed. Maybe you can put like an American flag or maybe you can just put like a count of uh, pieces inside. Like we have, like on this specific product, we put like a yellow, a yellow sign on the packaging, uh, saying it's like 40 pieces inside. So it, it really stands out in the search results. If you're going to see you like, oh my God, I would definitely click on this product, especially if the product $2 cheaper and so on, so on. When, because when you are a bestseller, you pretty much uh, selling uh, 30% more than next guy because of the, um, because of the bestseller and oh, my camera went off. <laughs> and, your, uh, and your PPC is going to be better. Like uh, your, your performance is going to be way, 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 way better. Also, we start to experiment now by reducing the amount of PPC we're spending on a product. So like uh, this specific product that I'm talking about bestseller, we cut off PPC by 70% and we went up. How? Uh, How did so you cut we, off PPC? How did you cut off PPC? Like what, what campaign so did you okay. have? We're spending, like, we're spending a thousand dollars a day on PPC on this product. Okay. So let's say 30 grand a month. If we're going to calculate a total amount of orders we have in per month, let's say we have a thousand orders. Uh, okay, uh, let's say we have 10,000 orders. So we're paying $30,000 for PPC. So this $3 we're spending per each organic and marketing order is, uh, uh, it's sizable. Let's try to drop uh, by $3 our price and cut PPC by 70%, which will be like almost like 20 grand. And uh, you know what? Uh, we, we automatically went up in organic positions because the price also matters on Amazon. Maybe it's not going to work in every, every product, but that's when, what um, we was discussing with you before. Every category, every product is different. So you have to understand and you have to be like strategically testing all the time, like strategically thinking, looking, reviewing and since i'm um, i'm selling almost in every category i sell in beauty i sell in supplements and industrial and musical and arts and kids and and grocery uh, i can say that not uh, every strategy works for every product so if you figure out that this like eye catching spot will work out for you uh, will be more performance maybe some categories will not but i didn't see a category there where improving main image will not work it, it works 100 percent of the time so we're talking about uh, image improvements, say 95% of, of uh, all our calls. It's the uh, it's, uh, biggest department that you have. I would say if I would choose to focus on the PPC or choose on uh, designers, I would choose designers versus PPC. I would just fire all the, all the PPC and just focus on the designers. If, if, I, if that would be a question, if they would choose me a, two different departments. So you, you heard yeah. it right there. D Dima just said, you know, a graphic designer that's going to design your main images and even your secondary images is far more important than any PPC strategies that you're trying to implement. Um, yeah, that's content amazing. first, distribution second. <laughs> so yeah. The content have to be an amazing quality, amazing. Not um, don't no, when I'm when I'm telling about amazing quality, it's not like it have to be 4K or 8K or it have to be done in a professional studio. It can be recorded on an iPhone 
but it have to relate to the actual customer that you're trying to match. So the moment the customer sees this, it's becoming like a, like a spark in his head. The moment customers scroll in the search results, because he don't know your product, he don't care about products on Amazon, to be honest. He just, if you, if you guys live in, in the United States and you're buying products on Amazon, once, think how you've been buying the product. You just type in coffee mug, you scroll, you choose one or two products, you probably buy two or three, uh, they deliver to you and rest of you, 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 you pick one the best and you, you, you return the rest. So a lot of people, they, they have this uh, buying behavior. People buy in seconds. They don't have time to think. They, they, they just like, so it's, it's, a, it's in their uh, subconscious mind. Like if you have like a very eye-catching product, you probably will stand out and people will just choose you. They, they, the click-through rate, the conversion will be amazing. So Especially on, yeah. that, on that note, Dima, I want to dive in a little bit more. You've tested this numerous times and you were as bold to say, Millions. this works across all product categories. The number one lever is the main image. So Dima, I would love to hear from you. What are the things that you can do in your main image that you have seen provide better results against the competition, right? Uh, let's say you do have a regular iPhone stand, kind of like you were showing earlier. You have a regular iPhone stand. And to be honest with you, it's, it looks the same as many of the others. How would you change that main image? And what are some of those things that you've seen proven to make your main image stand out and be different? Josh, fantastic question. First of all, uh, then let's step one step aside, all right? One step back, the product selection. I would not launch a product stand that look alike like everybody. And I probably, I would not even try to improve the stand because they all look alike. Uh, I will give you a quick example. Go right now on Amazon, maybe pause this uh, podcast and type massage, ma massage gun. And you will see every massage gun look alike. You cannot even understand the di difference between them. They're all black. They all have this all hats and you, pretty much you, you're guessing what you're going to buy. Like the actual customer, think from the customer perspective. They, they, they have no preferences. They just buy something. Maybe, and the prices, they, they're almost the same. Like five, ten dollars difference is not a big difference for a product that costs 60 or 80 dollars in America. So it's not a determination as well. Uh, the product selection mix, before we're doing a product selection, that we'll, before we're launching a product, we're trying to find out is there any way for us to stand out in the search results and be and look different? Doesn't have to be product have to be different, but a lot of time you will find out that there's like little things. Like as I, as I was saying, maybe maybe adding a packaging on a on an image. It, it happened to me before with one of the guys. He posted in some Facebook group. He said like, "Hey, I launched this like a power connector. They all look, they all looks the same. I, I go on Amazon. I couldn't find him, and then I say, "Oh my God, that's him." And I say, like, listen, try to add a package. He said, my package looks shitty. It's a, it's a Chinese package. It's like, uh, it's not even worth to, to take a picture of it. I say, like, no, no, no. Don't do the original package. Make a beautiful, like, black and yellow combination. Like, you can just talk to a good designer. They can come up with something. And, uh, and also, go sometimes to the um, elect uh, stores with the electronics, like a Best Buy, and see what, how the packaging in a... And other companies look like you. You would be surprised how beautiful they can be. Maybe don't try to go after uh, Apple, and we're gonna talk about this because some people they try to copy this like nice slick designs. But those those guys they they have a powerful brand following. For them, um, it's completely different how people look at at the products. And, and when when we're talking about Mar Amazon Marketplace and only about Amazon Marketplace, you have to understand the rules there a little bit different. Versus uh, if you sell on Shopify versus if you show, sell on uh, Facebook uh, landing pages, like Facebook to the landing pages. Or maybe if you try to sell on TikTok, it's completely different fish. <laughs> and rules is completely different. So you have to understand fundamentals of Amazon algorithm to make sure you follow these rules. And one of them, it's a, it's a visual. So the visual, let's say, and the guy, he plays this nice looking standing uh, uh, box. And he said, like, oh my God, my sales like went up three times. Because of the because of the just the image, and I said that in the next batch, I'm just gonna make this box and um, and I'm gonna change. So, it. and I I can tell you maybe, maybe on that main image to, on that uh, main image, then Dima, what you're saying is he created a main image featuring a product package, even exactly. though his product packaging didn't look like that 
yet, right? Exactly. The package that the customers are receiving, it could just come in a poly bag or whatever it's coming in currently. But what you're saying is he first tested it out before he went through the effort of redesigning and putting together a whole new product package first. Yeah, that, but also you have to understand one thing. You, they probably have to meet a customer expectation. A lot of time when you, as I'm saying, if you guys live in the United States and you're buying products on Amazon and let's say you purchase a coffee mug, you receive the coffee mug. Uh, let's say you, you let, uh, let me ask you this question. If, you, if you've been buying products on Amazon, which is I'm 100% sure you did, do you remember any of the packages product came with? Let's say if I use in this stand, I don't, I cannot even recall how the package was look like. <laughs> so yeah, it's technically, true. it's people, true. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just, just don't try to be too crazy. Let's say if your product comes in a shitty poly bag and you you're showing like an amazing box, maybe it's it's too much and people, some people may complain. But you have to put in your in your title, package may vary. That's mm. in, it's that's important part. Um, or maybe somewhere in the, in the listing that package may vary. And of course, uh, because you're testing, um, overall try to make sure you. Uh, you improving. <laughs> You're not just uh, yeah. uh, blindly aligned and uh, and trying to pretend like you're a good guy while you just uh, uh, um, a shitty like 50 cent product. So on that note then, Dima, so strategy number one to increase the click-through rate for your main image would be creating or designing a product packaging that makes you stand out, even if that's not the actual product packaging the product comes in. So that's strategy number one. What are the other like tips or hacks or strategies that you've seen that consistently outperform the competition as it relates to optimizing main images? Another part that I, I forgot to say when I just mentioned if I would choose between um, PPC team or designers team, I probably would uh, stand with the designers team. Important part is this. Remember one important thing. There's only two ways to make money on Amazon from, from different placements. And the placements could be free or paid. Organic placements, they're going to make money to you. And PPC placements, they can make money to you or wherever you, you place there uh, by paying for the placement. The biggest part about this, if you're going to stop your PPC, uh, pretty much you stop paying for the placements, how much money are you going to make staying uh, organically? That's, that's an important part. And paying for the placements on Amazon by not making money out of organic placements, you're overpaying for under optimized listing. I hope I hope you will understand again. When you're just spending so much money on PPC and let's say not converting or not, not making sales from it or not making profits from it, it's because you're not making money from organic sales because your product underimproved or uh, people who buy and who, who, people who you're trying to reach, they're not seeing a value in a, in a listing that you created. And the moment you will realize this, you will understand 80% of your focus have to go first to improving the visuals and improving the relevancy between how people type in, let's say, coffee mag and what they see in the search results. And if you would be able to really understand, like dial in in the buyer's uh, behavior, buyer, buyer psychology, what he will, wants, what he expects, then you would be able to convert and make product like amazingly stands out. Uh, it's important to understand, like, for example, if we, if we see that we want to, let's say we, want, we can sell a product, let's say a coffee mug. And coffee mug, coffee cup, it's, it's two different search terms, coffee mug and coffee cup. If we're trying to rank for a coffee mug, we're going to write coffee mug at the beginning of the title and we're going to write coffee mug on the image. If we're trying to rank for the, a coffee cup, <laughs> we're also going to swap the image and we're going to add this to make sure that when someone type in coffee cup, they see coffee cup on the image and they see coffee cup on the title. So when you acquire, uh, we call them clusters. When you acquire the clusters, the cluster have to rep be represented on an um, uh, image. And then you just, at the, at the end of the test, at the end of the real ranking campaigns, you just need to um, figure out which cluster more relevant to you because uh, the product stays higher and organic and uh, people likes you at the organic searches more than, let's say, coffee mug or coffee cup or, um, I don't know, extended coffee mug. or like where I, I, I'm not selling coffee mugs. That's why I don't have that, that many examples. I just <laughs> come up with the, with the clusters. But probably you already understand uh, what I mean. Yeah, I love that. 
Um, all right. So you talked about product packaging. Any other last tips that you would share for optimizing a main image then? No, no, no. That's, that's, that's all good. Of course, you have, you have the, lots of images. Try to, to add uh, on the images people, uh, actual people, not, not fake people held, holding a, a, a cup that's been uh, applied to by Photoshop on the Fiverr for $5. Uh, just go on a, on a website like a joint brands, which is like a UGC creator. Like there's a joint brands, there's an incense, there's trend IO. My, my favorite is joint brands because it's easy to work, easy to set up campaigns and um, images for the actual people who cost you like 30 bucks. The videos, I think, start from 60 bucks and you just make sure, look, your Amazon listing, it's an asset, okay? It's a huge, gigantic asset with lots of small pieces. And it's not like you're doing some, like one thing. It's you're doing like a million things to make sure your asset is continuing improving day after day, year after year. And, and, that's, and that's what you're focusing on. A lot of time, as I, I was telling to you, like we've been selling product for eight years and we already changed this three times. Like, uh, because like in some categories, we change it even often. Like for example, we have a beauty company. We, I think we change the brand almost every year. We're just improving and improving and improving because the category is just continuously growing. Uh, the new trends, new colors, new lines, new patterns is going on the market. So you have to always be focusing. You cannot stop. It's, it's, uh, um, it's important part. And another, another part about your listing optimization, guys, you have to see a lot of sellers, they never seen their product. Uh, no, no, of course they seen their listing. They went on a listing, they check their product, they scroll a little bit, they see different parts, but not that many people see them in the search results. Even there are sometimes they see them in the search results. They, they, see, they don't see them every time they do updates. And another part, sometimes they don't see them on a mobile. They don't see them on a tablet, how they look like, how they look in the search results, how their actual product look in a, uh, when the pre- people click on it, how the ads look like, how the video ads look like. But the next part, their team members never see their products in the search results, in a mobile. And, and uh, uh, like, for example, if you don't know how to use inspect elements and the change for the mobile view, there's a, a free website. It's called um, webmobilefirst.com. It's a free website. You just put their URL and you're going to see how your product look like uh, in a mobile view. Yeah, Dima, I love that. Now, one last question I do want to ask you is, you know, Amazon has changed over the last decade. And one thing that you mentioned uh, a lot about is like, you need to compete with the top one to three sellers in your category, right? You need to get those one to three organic rankings. So Dima, my question would be, can you boil down in really simple terms, what is your launch strategy and how do you get your products launched um, or ranked organically Because you also mentioned like, hey, I'm also going to pull back on my PPC spend. So I'm curious in the world we live in today, there's no more search find buy. um, But how are you getting your products ranked? It's a gigantic topic. (laughs) I would say everything everything comes first from understanding like what exactly you want to rank for. Um, Let's say keywords. Yeah, like what exact keywords? Because a lot of people, they just come up with like this 300 list of keywords. It's almost impossible. And um, we, we, we call our system, it's called strategic ranking when we work with the team. And let's say we come up with, let's say, uh, when we launch in the product, first we're trying to rank only for three to five keywords. Of course, at the beginning, we use PPC, like extensively we're using PPC. We're also using um, different uh, email lists and SMS lists that we've been cre- uh, collecting for a long time. Um, in different niches, we use different systems. Let's say sometimes we launch products with a uh, variation mode. Sometimes we're using, uh, we're launching products uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the wine reviews and a uh, combination of this. It, like for me, if, if, if you want me to dial in in like specific process and variations of launches, because there's about like five different variations of launches we, um, we implement during the launches. And also, it's not only about, uh, it's not only about uh, uh, basic rules. It's also about um, how you fix an errors, errors along the way. because. Uh, for example, why we why we uh, launching first? Uh, uh, we call this test listing. We we launching a test listing first. We creating the listing, uh, and we never use this. We just use this for to see if Amazon will request any certificates or if Amazon has any like a stop keywords. Uh, or also we sending 30, 30 units to this listing for uh, to apply for the wine program. 
uh, the reason why we're doing this and we never use this listing. We just want to, we want, uh, uh, I'm, I'm saying we don't use this listing as a main listing for launches. We just, we call this test listing. So we send the story units, we see people buy, uh, people take our wine products. Let's say we're receiving 10, 12 reviews from one campaign like that. And a lot of time, uh, uh, wine customers, they could be very tricky. They good, but they could be tricky. Sometimes they, they don't leave you good reviews. So if your product organically is not good, not organically, but let's say in supplements and beauty, a lot of time wine customers is not ideal place to get first initial reviews as they very, um, they picky, I would say they picky. They, they don't understand the product and they just leave in you like three star, four star. And you can end up at like 2.7 or 3.4 stars at the launch. And imagine if you, imagine if you send like 3000 units, now your lunch is done. You pretty much... <laughs> You, you just killed your lunch. So you have to remove these 3,000 units, pay a lot of money to Amazon, pay a lot of money to a prep center to repackage, relabel, and start brand new product. So sometimes that's what we're doing. We, we're just saying, okay, if the, if the wine program doesn't uh, impact in a good way, like we're not getting like 4.5, 4.7 stars on average from the test listing, we're not going to use a uh, um, wine program. But then in the future, let's say we, we swap this listing to two-pack, and then we can use this as an advantage to launch a main listing with a one pack. And pretty much it's kind of, it's a very simple strategy, but it doesn't give you much advantage. But overall, these pre-tests, they so important for you before you, uh, before you dive in. The, guys, I, what, what I, what I want to tell you, there's a lot of small little things. And of course, Josh, he's doing a great job asking me questions. And sometimes the, he, people can ask me like how to properly launch a listing. And I'm saying there's a lot of small things. There's not like a one major thing, like click on this button and everything goes well. <laughs> um, same as the PPC. When we launch with the PPC, we only focus on, I would say like three keywords, to be honest, just to make sure these keywords are the most relevant. We've been created a product uh, as much as we could to be relevant to these search uh, uh, terms. And we used to try to rank or boost uh, sales for uh, small keywords first, long tail keywords first, then we're trying to go after big keywords. We realized that going after big keyword is way more profitable and way more guarantee and way more sustainable. they just going from after small keywords, then a bigger keywords, then like medium and, and bigger and bigger. So it's, it's better to, to create a coffee mug, like white color coffee mug. <laughs> And because we did research and this is the, uh, let's assume nobody sell white coffee mags on the entire planet. And we just come up with this brilliant idea. And that's what white people, well, for example, nobody sell coffee mug with a, with a handle. And we're just like, oh my God, the handle will change. Yeah, so. I love that. So Dima, real quick on the PPC campaigns, when you first launch, if you're focusing on the three most, you know, trafficked or highest search volume keywords, are you turning on any other ad campaigns or are you just starting with three exact no. match keyword campaigns? Three exact match, no, no, nothing else. That's it. Nothing else. Just to, and we, we track in the conversion. We, we don't, we don't, it's not really important for us how much cost the click and how much we're spending. Like ACOS is doesn't matter. The conversion. Um, we want to see if our product in the eyes, because as I told you, we artificially place in product to the top results. And we want to see if the customers who are actually looking for our type of the product liking what we place in there. So if we place in there and our product, the conversion have to be at least 20% from our ads. And if conversion to, uh, less than, let's say, 10%, we have a problem, Houston. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you can compare it to the market average, right? Using uh, uh, the brand metrics there within Amazon, P the PPC. SQP. Yep. And ask. Look, uh, for example, there's two, two main reports that people use nowadays. Uh, SQP report, which is Search Query Performance Report. Um, this report is a bit off. You have to understand the data that in this report is, um, is very purified data, I would, say, I would say. It's like, I'm not going to go too much into details. I, I can just tell you for sure. In SQP report, the only positive data that you can get is the ratio between uh, traffic, clicks, add to carts and purchases. If you, if you keep this ratio when you're ranking your products or trying to keep this ratio, then Amazon likes you, the algorithm uh, feeds you, and it's going to pu push you up. And, um, and brand analytics reports, they are, they, they are important for you. Let's say if you're trying to rank for keyword coffee mag, 
And um, let's say you, you're asking your audience through email or SMS list. Let's pretend you're doing that way. Then you, if you're not showing up in a brand analytics reports and like, as a, like the most converted and the most clicked ASIN, the chances for you to go up almost none. So you're either doing so- something wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, brand analytics data uh, doesn't include PPC, which means um, it's only organic from organic placements. So uh, beginning is, is a bit tougher, of course. And you're probably going to be uh, expecting product to be a break even in the next like 90 days. Sometimes we can see faster. Sometimes depends on your launch strategy. If you're launching through the variation or frequently bought together tab, then probably your, um, uh, your profitability would be higher or you would be break even for, uh, faster in like 30 days. But usually we see the product, uh, if it's stand alone product with its own cluster, uh, you're probably going to see about three months to become break even sustained with the, with the inventory. Yeah. And yeah, and get some like organic traction already. I love that. Well, Dima, I know we could go on for another hour or two talking about all of these and, and all of them are deep topics, as you mentioned, but it was great to see kind of the inside of how you're working with your brands and what are you prioritizing and the importance of listing optimization. Um, so Dima, as we wrap up this show, I love to leave the audience with three actionable takeaways from every episode. Here are the three actionable takeaways that I noted, Dima. Let me know if you think I'm missing something. Lit- or Action item number one is going to be you need to differentiate your product, right? When I asked Dima the question of, you know, what's the listing image hack that we need to include or what's the list or what's the launch strategy that's going to help us get ranked here's the secret guys come out with a product that is not a me too product right what you need to do is utilize tools such as mid journey or dolly and maybe go to ai to just brainstorm some new different ways that this product could appear and then use the different tools that you mentioned in TeleV, product pinion or pick foo to then test out and get people's feedback to say, you know, which, which of these images or designs stand out the most to you, which one would you like to click on to learn more about, right? So you can validate your product idea without having to go purchase the product from China or wherever you're getting it. Um, so start there. First and foremost, come up with a differentiated product. That's action item. Number one, action item. Number two, is going to be focusing on your main image. I have heard this time and time and time again on this podcast. The biggest lever that you can pull in your business in terms of listing optimization for any of your current products is the main image, period. All right. So with that being said, Dima shared a great idea in terms of create product packaging, even though that product packaging might not be what the customer ultimately receives. A, they're probably going to forget about it by the time they actually get it. But in there, you can you can really set yourself apart by incorporating product packaging on your main image that just helps you stand out. It catches somebody's eye and that is going to increase your click through rate, ultimately your conversion rate, um, and that's going to propel your organic ranking further. And then the third action item I'm going to say here is focus more on the creative such as digital, you know, a graphic designer, the digital creative space in your business, lean into that even more than you are on the PPC and analytics side. Now, everything is important, but what Dima referred to is I would rather go with a very strong graphic designer that can create amazing main images over somebody that's wicked smart with PPC. And so start there. If you don't have a solid team that does your main images, your secondary images right now, that is one of your key hires that you should be focusing on bringing internally to your team, or at least having a good contractor that you can go back to over and over again, that understands the importance of setting yourself apart on the Amazon marketplace. So Dima, we talked about so much, but those are my three actionable takeaways from this episode. There any- in addition, uh, Josh, you missed one thing. All right, let's um, hear it. Consumables. Mm. Guys, try to focus on consumables because uh, or as, a, as a guy, this uh, owner of uh, Paul Mitchell, he said, we're not, we're not selling uh, a shampoo, we're selling a subscription. Uh, 
consumables as a key uh, for your continuous growth uh, in the future. If your product is good enough, people will continue buying and you will just grow year over year over year uh, because the more and more people will, will use your product, especially if you're innovative and you continuously improve in the product package and maybe some ingredient, you track the trend. Yeah. Dima, I couldn't agree with you more on that. I would definitely, and, and that's even good food for thought for myself, um, for us to lean more into like, what are consumable products, right? And I think people need to stop thinking about, oh, supplements are the only consumable thing, right? Or just grocery related items, right? There's a lot of different consumables you talked about, you know, could be sh packaging tape, packaging bubbles, or it could be what you just talked about there. It could be even like a, a card that somebody has to send, a, a business thank you card or something like that, right? There are things that people will need. Yeah, go to stores like a Home Depot, go to stores like Publix, PetSmart. Majority of the stores, the local, the, the retail stores, you need, you need to see uh, they focus on, on uh, products that people repeatedly buy. Uh, it's not only like one-time purchase uh, throughout the life or in, in three, four years. If you if you sell if you sell coffee mugs, people don't buy many coffee mugs, especially they do maybe buy. But and uh, America is um, over consumption country. But <laughs> overall, <laughs> overall, people buy way more. Like, I, I will give you I will give you a great example. I just went for some uh, uh, business event in Alabama with the uh, with the offer mafia guys. I think you also uh, part of that. I don't, I don't know. Are you are you part of the offer mafia with the Sean, uh, Sean and Seth? Yep, Sean Hart. That's yeah, yeah. Steven. So anyway, we went there, and uh, yeah, this year, they, this year they did like a, this uh, a little meetup, and then uh, they um, it's like a tourist area, so they they don't have like a great uh, coffee shops, but they just opened a brand new, amazing, like maybe like two years ago coffee shop. It's called Happy Pappy, and uh, we went there. The uh, the coffee shop is amazing. Uh, we like that amazing desserts, and I, and I say to them. Guys, do you sell matcha? They say like, yeah, we do sell matcha. I say, could you could you show me? And they show me my brand. So and they and I said like yeah it's 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 my company. So every time like for example I go to here in Fort Lauderdale I see coffee shops carry my my green tea. Uh, the reason why because it's a it's a good quality people buy this over and over again. And I say like hey uh, uh, would you like to have a free bag? I told her that she's like yeah and she showed me the history of purchases of this tea. So coffee shop just keep continue buying your product. The customers keep continue buying your product. It's consumables. Uh, and if your product is uh, meeting a customer's expectations, then they can be with you forever. Uh, I think I was reading about Starbucks. Starbucks has an average order value, like overall, like lifetime value per customer, $1,700. Wow. So we, we're going to spend $1,700 buying products in Starbucks, maybe more, because it's average. Uh, imagine how much money they can spend on marketing and brand building. And that's the key that, that you have to solve and click in your brain and uh, maybe you sell right now uh, a stand will not be forever the stand may be of roof technology improving maybe in the future people don't need uh, phones but like i used to sell lavalier microphones uh like uh, for iphones but audio jack doesn't uh, not available anymore but i made 2.5 million dollars out of this product back in the days so and uh then pretty much product right now dead because nobody had using uh, audio jack three thousand dollars per month but yeah I think it's important. I think you hit on a key topic there, which is like you constantly need to be innovating. And just because you'd started somewhere doesn't mean like that's what you need to stay in for the rest of your life. Right. You should always be launching new products. And so I love that. Like, think of how you can create a consumable product that people will need to come back and purchase over and over again. And look, you know, company Segway, Segway. Yep. Yeah, it's like a stand. You're standing like you're riding. The reason why company went bankrupt because their product was too good. You have to understand this always. Your product have to meet customer expectation. It doesn't have to be the best. So, and we, um, Amazon, it's a mass market. So if you sell in a coffee mug, it, it does, doesn't have to be made for, out of gold. It have to be made out of normal product material <laughs> that people expect and sometimes can break. Yeah, <laughs> makes, makes a lot of sense. Dima, as we wrap up this episode, I'm going to ask the three questions we ask each of our guests. So number one, what's been the most influential book that you've read and why? I, I will give you two. All right. So number one, it's your personal performance, which is, I believe it's, uh, it's called Atomic Habits. Probably you've heard this. If you, already wrote, if you already read Atomic Habits and you're like, hey, it's one of my favorite books, then read the next one that kind of a step up. 
in understanding your uh, human behavior. It's called willpower instinct. You go, it's going to blow your mind how we allowed ourselves to be a bad people. <laughs> Not bad, but I'm saying like you eat a burger because there's a salad and a tomato, but you're not thinking about bun and a fatty piece of meat inside that really actually like uh, exceeding your calories in, in, for three days. <laughs> or, you, uh, or you're riding Tesla to save on gas, but you're not paying taxes. So <laughs> you delay with the taxes. So you're like, where are, where are? I'm, just, I'm just kidding, you know, so. And it's uh, and the second book, uh, second book would be for you guys. It's um, it's uh, how to hire proper people. It's called Who W H O. The book is just it's not a it's not a book just to read. It's a it's a SOP. It's a manual. Even in this book, there's a specific step by step questions that you need to ask the person. The scorecard of the uh, of the of your employees. Master this book. It's 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 highly important for you to become a professional. Um, corporation owner. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree. It's, it is a fantastic book. All of those are. So I'll double down there with you, Dima, and, and recommend those as well. And Question- if you're a lazy person, read another book. It's called Meeting Sucks. It, the book is like <laughs> 20 sucks. minutes to read. And, uh, but you will understand how to run proper meetings, uh, how to not like... Um, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs, after they grow the company, they, they grow in their ego inside. So to make sure the ego is under control, um, you need to understand you under control as well. And that's that's very important part. So Yep. I agree. I love it. You got you gave us four, even more than we asked for. I love it. Dima, question number two. What's your favorite productivity tool or new software tool that you've recently discovered that you think is going to be a game changer? I will give you two. <laughs> oh, okay. Never for you over the never for all, all the order. time. The number one, I, th- I think for the productivity for you and for your focus, it's, um, it's, a, it's a free Chrome extension. It's called OneTab. I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, a lot of people, and I've seen this like millions of times, they have like million tabs open and they need all of them all the time, especially girls because they, lo- like, um, uh, they like to do multitasking and girls are really good at multitasking. But overall, your, your focus and your, um, your thing have to, have to be focused. Uh, one tab will, will, will help your ability to reduce all of it, put in a specific organized list, and it's free to use. So you can just go to Chrome extension, download, and thank me later. When we're hiring people in our company, we have like few tools that we're giving them for uh, acquire, and one tab is one of them to make sure they understand how to keep the proper focus. And uh, the second one, mm, I would say it's a brain FM, brain.fm. Uh, when I'm tired and uh, I feel like, hey, I'm already exhausted from, from overworking uh, or from like continuous work, it's, uh, uh, it, it just helps you. you. You just set up like 15 minutes. Uh, it's, like it's like a special music. Uh, as, or if you work with yourself in the office, you put it on. Sometimes it's, uh, at the beginning it feels distracting, but then you like feel like your focus just dialing in and it's like special waves that help your brain to, um, to set this up. It, it works amazing for me. But another, the, the, the biggest part that helps me to keep my energy going, it's my cold plunge that I build in my house. <laughs> of course, it's not a tool, but uh, you guys maybe need to consider uh, cold showers. Uh, when I come home, I'm tired. I want to like, maybe like take a nap, like one hour nap. I take two minutes, a cold plunge, three minutes max. And it's like an like espresso shot, Red Bull shot. And you're like, phew. <laughs> you're ready to go. Dima, I love it. Yeah. He, he, again, you, you continue to over deliver there. I love that. Those are some three great ideas, um, productivity tools. All right, Dima. Guys, because I hustle every single day. <laughs> I love it. Oh, you got to. one last thing, guys, oh, I want to tell you. Those of you who listen and already stand for almost an hour on this podcast, uh, uh, maybe right now you're going through like some difficulties or maybe your, your business is thriving like crazy and you're like, hey, I just want to acquire more and more knowledge. You have to understand, none of the good times last forever, but none of the bad times last forever. So you always have to be focused. Like my wife asked me, hey, Dima, there's potential economy crisis going or like uh, economy may collapse. What are we going to do? Do we have any plan for it? I say like, listen, regardless of the situation, we will keep continue working. If we keep continue our healthy behavior of uh, being a productive people, there's nothing can stop us. So don't be afraid of the, of the future. If you, if you create and condition yourself to be a performer, 
There's nothing that, that can stop you. Even if you go through the difficult times, continue focusing. The, you making sure you continue going. If you will know my story, how I came to USA and how I to USA and how my how many times I lost businesses, you would feel like there's nothing that can stop person. Uh, just keep continue going. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And Dima, I love that. I think that's that's an extra special bonus hack that you just gave us. That the mindset is so so important you might be on cloud nine right now you might be raking in the most sales that you've ever had but it's so important to not get too high and think that yeah, you you figured it out because guess what there will be a downturn coming something is going to happen you're going to lose a key employee uh, you're going to get some type of listing suppression or suspension or or just random stuff is going to happen to you the most important thing is to develop really good habits, right? Good habits, and even when the times are tough, keep going back to those good habits that you have in place. Keep working with a goal in mind, and ultimately, you will get back. You will get to that mountaintop and be able to look across the vistas and say like, okay, these ups and downs were good. They brought me to where I am today. So I love that. Dima, last question here. Who is somebody that you admire or respect the most in the e-commerce space that other people should be following and why? That's a, that's a really good question. I would say um, uh, I like Alex Hermosi. That's guy. Um, I just recently discovered this guy. He's, um, he's interesting. Maybe I, I'm not going to follow every advice he has, but some things are very logical, I would say. <laughs> I like Grant Cardone as well. He, the guy is just like, I, I listen to his book 10X like so many times. I'm not sure if he wrote this book. But overall, maybe he did. <laughs> and look, uh, I don't remember which book I was reading. I think it's called uh, Deep Work. Uh, you need to understand one thing, guys. And, and they wrote this as well. Um, even if you love, like, like some personality or follow some person, um, a lot of times if you will meet them in person and talk to them, you may be disappointed. Uh, because you 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 probably follow in person for some specific topic. Maybe the, he's like an expert in Amazon. Maybe he's expert in marketing, or he's expert in buying, reselling a real estate. I'm just talking about Grant Cardone. <laughs> but um, overall, you never know who is this person. Uh, maybe 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 this person is not very ethical. I'm not talking about uh, Grant Cardone. I'm just saying maybe this guy is just completely ethical. I'm just saying sometimes uh, you can be disappointed. Maybe this person uh, don't have a healthy uh, routines or have a like broken. Um, family uh, representation or something that something that will not uh, not not will be um, aligned with your vision. So um, just always think like um, what exactly you want to acquire from the person someone recommend you. Let's say like Alex Hermosi or Grant Cardone. Maybe just take some things, but don't uh, don't uh, don't create yourself a idol. That's really important. Yeah, I love that. Dima, this has been a fantastic conversation. If people want to learn more about you, they want to follow you, they want to learn more about your software tools that you have available, where can people follow you and learn more? Yeah, just follow me on Facebook. I, I post sometimes content, sometimes funny, sometimes not. <laughs> sometimes uh, I, I, uh, no. I do a lot of, uh, a lot of time I do uh, local meetups, which I believe I like to connect with people. And I work a lot, so uh, sometimes I do like once a month, once per two months, I do local meetup. If you're on Amazon, in an Amazon space and uh, if you live in Florida or plan to visit Florida, if you see I, I'm posting that I have a local meetup, I share a lot of actionable stuff that I cannot share uh, publicly on a public re- recorded web podcast. So sometimes people ask me like more like deeper questions and I tell them exactly how things work. That's, um, that's important. So... Follow me on Facebook. Love that. Instagram. Facebook, Instagram, meet them in person in Florida. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, Dima, thanks so much for your time today. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, Josh. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Visit ecombreakthrough.com for more information. If you've enjoyed today's episode, the best way you can show your appreciation is by clicking the subscribe button and quickly leaving a review. See you again next time.